let's cook. So here I am putting together a meal and I have a few elements. This is the serving bowl that I talked about in an earlier video. And this serving bowl I use in a multitude of ways. And I have a platform underneath it, right? And so it's two pieces. You can get it inexpensively at Walmart, right? And so basically this combination of the platform and the plate underneath and the serving bowl serves multiple purposes. I could put my spices at the bottom here and then as I get my spices all situated, then this allows me to have the serving bowl and the preparation bowl all in one. So I can move between different areas, right, when I'm doing cooking. So this is the pot that I'm using. It's a four quart pot. I have experimented with two quart and 1.5 quart and four quart I find is the best pot overall. So I absolutely love the four quart pot and this is coconut oil. Unrefined, organic, non-GMO coconut oil. And so I put in the pot. The pot was uh, set to medium heat, medium heat. Sometimes I might put it on low heat if I am just getting things prepared, uh, you know, over a longer period of time. But um, here I have it on medium heat. And so that's why the coconut oil is receptive uh, to the heat uh, right away, right? And so in some cases, I start with a cold pot and I put the coconut oil in there and I have to wait for the pot um, to warm up sufficiently for the coconut oil to, to melt, right? And I like using coconut oil in this way, not the pre-liquid. Uh, pre I don't like to use in a pre-liquid because there's some processing involved in that. And real coconut oil, real coconut oil does not come out liquid. Not unless it's processed. The only time I use processed coconut oil, and it still has to be organic, is in the form of MCT oil. And I'm using that for health. I'm using that for, um, you know, other uh, purposes, maybe as a salad dressing, a, 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 what do you call a room temperature or cold uh, salad um, dressing. But for cooking with coconut oil, I like to use what I consider to be the real deal, an actual clump out of a jar of coconut oil that I can then uh, use in a multitude of ways. And so um, here I've gotten it uh, liquefied and it's at the right temperature now for spices, right? So I'm going to put in spices and this is a mixture of spices that I talked about in the video immediately preceding this one, okay? The video immediately preceding this one has the actual spice mix and how I mixed it up and that sort of thing. This is what I consider to be an, a, a technique from India. I call it the Tatka technique. Now, there is more to Tatka than what I show here. This is the form that I settled on, where it consists more of stirring in the spices and putting the different elements in play, right? And so that's uh, what I do here. And basically, this technique allows you to uh, get the spices mixed in a very good consistency using the heat and it brings out the flavor of the spices. Now, my best YouTube channel for seeing how this is done on a regular basis is Young Man Cooking, uh, Y-E-U-N-G, and then M-A-N, and then Cooking, Young Man Cooking. And he does techniques similar to this. There are other cooking videos that I've watched, and I've watched dozens of them. And what I'm doing here is my own specific spin and variation of what they're doing, right? And so I like this. The uh, food results come out very flavorful when I do this. And so I like this very much. And one of the things that um, people would be concerned about doing this is would anything stick to the pan and that's never an issue because what i saw from young men cooking and others is that you have a process of what's called deglazing the bottom of the pan so i'm throwing in some jasmine rice right and i got the idea for this on young man's cooking uh, latest video that he published i think 
it might have been October 27 or it might have been 28. I'm not sure, but it was sometime uh, in the in the past seven days. And this is not exactly the way he did it. His his video is called uh, the Ultimate Umami or something like that, or or um, or so umami. But I decided to, and everything I'm doing here, I'm doing for the very first time. This is my own uh, spin. Um, in his, he uses a little moisture liquid up front. I don't. I am doing what's called toasting the rice. So I have heard about this technique before. I haven't watched a video on it, but I decided to just go go at it. And I'm going to toast this rice right here without any additional moisture. And this is going to cause the spices to absorb right into the rice. The spices are going to absorb right into the rice. Also, this is the very first time, other than uh, Indian cooking out at a restaurant, uh, that I've actually had fresh onions uh, in a meal that I've made since I got off my 30-day fast um, a couple of weeks ago, right? And so, um, this is my first time actually cooking onions. And so, I'm going to uh, cook this, which for me will be an unconventional style, a very unconventional style. I also want to put in some um, some hard cabbage, right? And so I'm going to do that here in a little bit, but uh, I want to stir in these onions because I want these onions to also pick up on these these spices and this flavor, right? And so that's what I'm really doing here. And when I do stuff like this, where I'm putting in ingredients right into the spice mix directly without any intervening liquid, without any liquid in between, then what I end up doing is I'm putting in the hard vegetables and the hard ingredients, the ingredients that can take the heat and that can bind with the spices and that can assist in deglazing uh, the can or the, the bottom of the pot, as it were, right? And so that's what I do is you just keep a continuous stir. So this is red cabbage. This is also the first time I've had red cabbage in a good while, right? I've already pre-cut the cabbage. Uh, this is part of my meal prep, right? And so I'm going to have a meal prep, um, food prep uh, video coming out a little bit later. But so, but this this cabbage is hard, right? You know, uh, cabbage is not like lettuce, you know, where it's uh, flaky soft, right? And so in my view, the cabbages in general can take heat a lot better than the lettuces, right? And the greens. And so I'm going to uh, go ahead and stir that in. And so that's the final ingredient that I'm stirring in. So I got rice, I got onions, and I got cabbage, all in a nice uh, hot um, mix of spice, right? Hot oil mixed with spice. And so the flavors come out very well. And I didn't know um, starting out if this would actually work. I'm actually going on intuition. This is all intuitional, informed by videos that I watched on cooking and food and all of that during my 30-day fast absorbed that some of that information and uh, now I'm going to pour in some water because I've moved beyond vegetable broth I don't use vegetable broth anymore don't need it I can just use straight spring water in my cook and I might use distilled water sometimes but most of the time for most of my uh, uses of water it's spring water in this case Deer Park spring water and I found that the water in my own taste buds is just as good as vegetable broth and it saves money right and so I don't really need the expense of vegetable broth and vegetable broth does add flavor it can but vegetable broth is derived ultimately from water you basically got the vegetables right that you are moving through the water to create this broth and I'm like hey let's see if we can create some semblance of that in real time through the food that I'm cooking so I'm 28 minutes into a 31 minute process. And so this is what that looks like. And so it's on low heat. Uh, remember, this entire thing except about, I'd say 15 or 10 minutes uh, in at the end is gonna be uh, all medium heat. I'm also gonna add broccoli sprouts, not into the cook because that would destroy the nutrients of these broccoli sprouts. I'm gonna add it to a, a bowl, right? And I'm going to show the contents of that bowl later. And then I'm going to have black bean sprouts, right? These are freshly sprouted. They're three days uh, young. And so um, I'm going to add those to the cook at some point. Um, I'm now 25 minutes in. And so a good bit of time has passed. 
And this is where we are with this process. We got uh, the ingredients now mixing very well. We got a good distribution of heat and water and moisture and oil and spices. And you just stir, <clears throat> you stir. Uh, some some of the uh, um, parts have stuck to the bottom of the pan and that is absolutely fine. There's no issue with that because that actually creates or contributes to the flavor. You wouldn't believe how much that contributes to the flavor, but it absolutely does. If you use the nonstick pans, you got a couple of issues. Number one, the chemical coatings that are at the bottom of the nonstick pans, they're not gonna be good for your health. And then number two, you are not getting a natural distribution of flavors such as what you would if you were cooking out in the wild, right? And so 24 minutes in, um, so I'm gonna let this um, sit for just a second. And then let's see where we're at. All right, so 20 minutes in, five minutes have passed, uh, four, four minutes have passed. And, and so, again, we got this medium heat. And I think it's time for us to look at um, another, another uh, aspect of this. So there's that rice. And as I said earlier, we got a little bit of a stick, but not too much of a stick. It's not too bad. Because when I'm doing it like this, I'm going to create some of that umami flavor that Jungman uh, uh, Cooking uh, talked about. This is going to create some of that umami. I've actually done this before one other time um, earlier in the day. So I actually know it worked. I just didn't do it with it dry on the pan. I had already had water in there. And so this, this one, this version, I'm doing it, I started out dry on the pan without adding the water to it. And so these are the sprouted black beans that I'm adding. This is going to add a good dose of proteins and other vital nutrients that are coming from the sprouted black beans. And I'm going to let them simmer along with the other ingredients for a good bit of time. And so everything is looking great so far. Again, I've never done this before, so I don't know how this combination of ingredients and this cooking preparation is going to turn out but I'm willing to go all the way and see where we're at. So we're about 18 minutes into this process and seeing some good results. This is the actual bowl and this is how I do uh, my greens now. Uh, see, I got the mixture of broccoli sprouts and this is, I believe, uh, some power greens. Um, I had some arugula earlier today, um, but this is gonna be the first time that I've added broccoli sprouts and mixed greens together in this fashion. And so the overall goal on this is going to be that um, when I have the when I have the uh, this this portion of the meal finished right and it's done, it's still going to have residual heat. And I'm gonna apply that residual heat right. I might have just a little bit more water here just to keep things uh, moving in the right direction. But that residual heat is going to go into the greens, right? But it's not gonna to be too much heat, just enough heat. When I pour this into the bowl with the greens in it, there's gonna be just enough heat to unlock nutrients from those greens. This is scientifically studied and researched information that I'm drawing on where, especially with broccoli sprouts, if you put just enough heat on it, but not too much, Oh, and this is my after spice that I talked about in the other video. This is the green spice, right? A uh, mixture that I came up with that's gonna add a nutrient layer to this as I get towards the end of this. But you add just enough heat to the broccoli sprouts, it's gonna unlock more of that sulforaphane. I believe it's sulforaphane is how it's pronounced, which is very beneficial, very beneficial to the body. So. Here we are, we've made some progress, and I wanted to get it to a point where I can just mix in that uh, green spice at this stage, right? Because I don't want to uh, ever overdo the green spice in terms of the temperature or in terms of the preparation, because there is there are nutritive aspects to those, those spices that I've added on top that are a little bit more sensitive to heat, right? So, um, and then I'm gonna add in just a few little greens from that serving bowl. I had an excess of serving greens or, or, or greens from that serving bowl. I'm gonna put this in here 
and I'm gonna let them cook into um, this overall meal. It's gonna add a layer of greens. It's gonna add texture so that my greens are not just, you know, all firm, right? And then I got this, this other ingredient here of this rice and these beans, but I got some greens that are in between, right? And so their nutritive level is not gonna be as high as the greens that are in the bowl, right? But they're gonna add taste and texture to the overall result. And see, this is me deglazing the pan just a little bit. And when you deglaze the pan like this, right, it also unlocks a little bit more heat, right? It unlocks a little bit more heat, so it's a very good technique. So, starting to get to the end of this process, believe it or not, right? And I thank you for uh, going along this journey with me. Um, but we are starting to head towards the end. And so, this is part of the ending process. And so... Uh, in a minute here, we're going to see where we're at in terms of time. And I do want to put in a little footnote, a little footnote. At the very, very end of this video, I used up all my storage. Look, we're 12 minutes. We, I used up all my storage on my uh, recording device, on my, on my uh, iPhone. All the storage. I got that little pop-up that said, you are out of storage. And I actually think it's a credit to the design of Apple that they can allow you to use all your storage and the phone still works. There are certain computers that you could use and the phone is a computer, but there are uh, conventional computers that you could use that they would just choke on having all their storage. But the phone still works, it still runs. So absolutely great um, engineering. Uh, 10 minutes in, and so at 10 minutes in, we're nearing the uh, time, and I'm actually setting this pot aside at this point because I want it to sit. I don't want any more of this uh, constant heat exposure. I want it to sit and I want the temperatures to diminish before exposing the greens in the serving bowl to the residual heat. So here we are, I'm gonna mix these up. And as I was saying, at the very end of this, um, my storage went out and so there was one more shot that I wanted to show you. So I had to use my uh, flash drive and uh, my iPhone flash drive and transfer off these videos onto a computer so that I could reclaim storage. And my actual finished meal had to sit for a while uh, while all of this took place, but it was actually fine because I was gonna have it sit anyway because I don't like to eat my food uh, hot right away. That can burn the roof, roof of your tongue and that can cause other issues. And so um, you see a little bit of a pause there. Um, that's when my video started to uh, go in the clink, right? But it was fine. And so, um, but overall, this process uh, went pretty well. And so this is Himalayan pink salt, right? And so um, I'm going to put some of that Himalayan pink salt into this mix. This is where I want my salt to be at. I don't want it to be into the actual uh, food that's cooking because I'm watching those chemical reactions, right? Heat applied to salt. It's not always a bad thing, it's fine, it's right. But I get much more of the salt um, and the sodium when I have it mixed in this way. And so I'm doing a, um, a salad mixing. Sometimes I put lemon juice right on this, or I might put vinegar right on this, right? Just depending. But in this case, uh, I decided not to do any of that. And I'm just gonna have the salt bind directly to the greens. And then, um, I, um, I think I'll be able to show um, actually pouring in the, the actual contents of the cook, right? What I was cooking. But I want to stir this because those broccoli sprouts, they can be very clumped together when they first come out. And so this allows me to get the broccoli sprouts and the greens. And notice I cut the greens, right? So I didn't go with the salad mix directly out of um, the container. I uh, pre-cut them because I prefer to eat salad greens um, already cut, right? And so here's five minutes in. So um, actually the, the, the uh, storage on my phone didn't stop uh, right here, but it got real close to it um, because I wanted to show the part where I poured in. There it is. I think, I think we made it here. So yeah, this is the part that I uh, want to show right at the end. And then I got one more piece after this. But, um, so I already have the salad greens and everything 
already um, uh, distributed right the way I want them because how it's distributed is an important part of the taste and how the uh, temperatures are all going to combine together right and so um, so now what I want to do is I want to start pouring in some of that um, some of those ingredients I'm using a spatula and when I use a spatula this way I can get more all 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 of the ingredients out of the pot right and that reduces cleanup see so I don't have to clean up as much when I use a spatula to just scrape every single bit right out of the pot, right? And so um, that's one of the reasons why I prefer to cook with a spatula as opposed to uh, anything else, right? And so that's um, basically what I've done here is applied the heated elements to the greens. And then this is um, the finished result. Actually, I uh, um, started um, stirring some of this and eating a little bit of this. Notice how caramelized those onions are. It's a perfect caramelization, actually. And I have to say, from a taste standpoint, I didn't know how this would turn out. But this turned out absolutely fabulous. And so, even with the technical difficulties in recording the video, I'm actually glad there's a video of this that I can refer to in the future. Because this particular meal that I, it, I don't want to say invented, but man, this actually turned out to be one of the best preparations I had ever done in my entire life. And I've done preparations like this and didn't know, you know, what I did. But I'm glad this one in particular is on video because this is the way to do salad.